I'm on a winter break, but I'll never forget you. I thought of uploading and speaking for 15 minutes or 25 minutes daily is all about the 15 minutes plan that people have been talking about. You to believe in yourself. Now, believing in yourself is not same as having. When I talk to a new learner, I understand. Of course, it comes with experience. And of themselves. course, I have to who just know only to speak about themselves. I mean, we should know how to give priority to. Hello, welcome to another video on my channel. Thank you for joining me again. This is Rini Rose Matthew. I'm your CELTA certified tutor. Thank you for supporting me this far. I thought of shooting outdoors today because it's quite nice here. I'm on a winter break, but I'll never forget you. I thought of uploading certain things, certain guidelines that will really help you. What can happen in the next 15 minutes when you learn a language? Of course, anything can happen in the next 15 minutes and speaking for 15 minutes or 25 minutes daily helps in fluency, does it? Of course, when you plan constructively, you cannot have an agenda when you decide to speak for 15 minutes daily. You have to be casual and also relaxed, then only it will help with your speech flow and every skill that you are working on. Today's topic is all about the 15 minutes plan that people have been talking about. It helps a lot. Of course, as I told you in the earlier videos, when you have an expert or a mentor, a guide to help you, it becomes easier. Otherwise, you will be lost. You would have been working on your skills for a long time, but you could be also lost at the same time on how to take the next step. Now, when you decide to speak for 15 minutes, let me tell you something. So this kind of schedule works for a person who has some sort of guideline. It's not going to help a person who has not got anything, any training, any course, or even if you don't have any reading experience, it may not help you. So what I'm trying to tell you is it's not that you can't learn by yourself. There are a lot of books available these days. Uh, helping you with self-learning techniques even if it's English or Chinese or Spanish whatever it is you can teach yourself what I'm trying to tell you is you should have some sort of guidance it could be in the form of a trainer a mentor a book or whatever you are trying to um, help yourself with I know that there is some sort of noise that you get to hear because I'm shooting outdoor but that's all part of language right that's all part of the ambience that you have the sound that you hear is also I feel a sort of expression and when it comes to English also you have got a rhythm you have the kind of tone that you really need to work on now the second point that I need to work is if you have some sort of guidance people always ask you to believe in yourself now believing in yourself is not same as having the confidence confidence builds gradually even if you just speak for 15 minutes on your own or if you're going to speak on a platform you will have confidence even if you don't understand your mistakes I'm speaking about the worst case but believing in yourself is different you have to believe that you will finish the activity you will be doing something for the day in connection with the language believing in yourself is not being so arrogant being timid or being very rigid with your discipline saying that I don't want anybody to teach me I'm not going to change my method sometimes you have to change your method see even me as a trainer sometimes I change my method I change um, the kind of style that I always use um, to train my learners because that's required when you update yourself you may change certain parts of your course certain parts of your modules to fit uh, the requirement of the learner sitting in front of you uh, so that's very important so believing in yourself as a trainer and as a learner is important saying that you will finish the schedule you're going to do it and one more thing is it's not overpowering yourself and overpowering, overpowering everything that's around but just believing that I'm going to do it makes a very big difference. Sometimes there'll be days when you feel that you're not going to do it, you're not going to make it, you feel a bit pessimistic. But I'm not speaking about the positive vibes that you have to fill yourself with. But you could always motivate yourself and say that 
I will do it. At least for 10 minutes, let me try doing it. That itself makes a difference. If you're just going to read two lines, when you finish doing it, you feel oh, relieved and relaxed. And that's why I told you in the previous video that you should have some sort of interest. When you have interest, you will end up just developing yourself. Uh, Even without a schedule, you will reach a point where you develop yourself. The next point is have a smile when you speak. It's good to always have a smile, but sometimes it's not possible to keep a smile all throughout. When you emphasize on certain points, when you're giving a kind of suggestion or when you really have to smile with a positivity, you should do it. You cannot have a dull face without any energy and look so gloomy. Who's going to listen to you? But there are people who force you to always smile throughout a video, to keep the smile, uh, to wear a smile. It's good, but when you force, it looks very artificial. You may not end up communicating in a casual way. So I'm talking about the speaking practice that you do every day for 15 minutes. Even if you don't wear a smile, you can be relaxed first. It's more about saying that, yes, I'm going to do an activity, finish. That's the first step. Second thing is, okay, just smile to yourself. And if you're not able to wear the smile for the entire video, it's okay. The third one is take baby steps. The third point could be just being calm. Keep away the other thoughts. You could be working in an office. There are a lot of people who tell me I may have to complete projects. I may have to send emails. I may have a lot of things for the day. Okay, just for 15 minutes, keep it away. If you have something urgent coming in, of course, you have to attend. But otherwise, choose those 15 minutes when you're really sure that you are going to be free. It could be before your sleep. It could be early in the morning or sometime in the afternoon. If afternoons are not comfortable, there are a lot of people who study from home who learn from home and take sessions. Or some people say that when I'm traveling in my car, I like taking sessions or I like listening to certain things. So those 15 minutes can be used for listening. And when you really want to speak, you can do that maybe before your sleep because with interest, you will find the time. Uh, you could be having a cup of coffee in front of you and try speaking for just 10 to 15 minutes. So once you finish the coffee also, you will be speaking about something. Now, when you do this activity, you shouldn't hunt for words. There are people who first hunt for words, refer the meaning and then begin speaking. You should have done all these things before the speaking activity. So when you sit down to speak for the 15 minutes, you should have at least 10 words ready in front of you. Okay, you should have done your homework. Homework is not sitting and writing down the meaning. Some, some sort of work should have been done so that you're ready for the 15 minutes. See, remember, you are finding the time to sit and speak. So when you're doing that, you cannot go around hunting and searching for words and then referring the books and then telling yourself that I'm going to do something. No. So uh, make sure that the 15 minutes are productive. When I talk to a new learner, I understand. Of course, it comes with experience. And of course, I have to prepare on some activities that will meet the requirement of the learner because everybody is not here in front of you to only learn sentences. They may just want to pass an interview. So what can I do to this particular learner so that he or she upgrades to the next level and be very casual with the interview? Okay, so that's one particular example. So when you do some sort of homework earlier, that is before the time of speaking or for me before taking my training session it helps me a lot I go through the materials I go through the resources that I have and then sometimes I make my own resources but I never do that on that day because that's not going to help me it's not going to help the learner also the next point is body gesture so some people ask you to use hands now earlier it was not very comfortable for me I used to end up uh, standing very stiff on the stage and speaking to my audience but later I realized that when I use my hands the speech opens up I'm able to give more points and of course it came with practice and with reading for me now, when you use hands it's a very good way of relaxing your body and you have words coming out it may not work with everyone because I have seen teachers asking students to always use their hands like this because when you're on the stage you have to be a bit more dramatic so that the last person also sitting in the hall is able to see you but that's not the case when it comes to speaking to yourself in those 15 minutes practice using your hands in a very natural way okay there could be a few gestures that you repeat to yourself 
uh, try to ask a friend or analyze for yourself if you're repeating the gestures all the time because even in our speech we have got a few words that we repeat some people say you know some people say all right some people uh, would say like okay it's it's not because they're running short of words but it, it it is a kind of habitual pattern so even for me when it comes to the hand gestures i make sure that i don't repeat it i alternate it yes but with practice you will also be able to use it in a proper way there are no standing rules telling that you should do it like this you should do it like that no when it comes to an interview when it comes to a particular company's protocol or the code of conduct of course they will tell you what is to be done and of course you will have the dress code you will have the body gestures all these things comes under the personality development course it's not just about speaking in english the way you keep your body the way you speak even if you don't wear a smile how can you be assertive the presence of mind that you need to have when you speak with a person who is so violent and rude you know these days we get to see people who always elevate themselves who just know only to speak about themselves i mean we should know how to give priority to the time to the schedule that you have when you have a plan even if an obstacle comes in you will know what you have finished or what is left to be done what's undone what's done such kind of things so the next 15 minutes is very important when you speak when you sit down to speak but it's not just speaking and repeating the mistakes it's not enough that you keep talking just like that without any content so today you speak about the nature tomorrow you're going to speak about some other topic but what is the use if you have the same level of words or the same kind of sentence structures if you haven't learned anything new or uh, if you are not even broadening the horizon of your thought you cannot do everything in a day but at least if you add one ingredient to your speaking activity every day it helps you it really helps you and that's what we all have been talking about yeah so it is a slow process and one more thing is you cannot tell yourself that i have only 4 months to learn the english language and that i just have 4 hours a week how can you keep a stipulated time like that learning is a never ending process you can have time of course when i teach also i have time maybe 2 or 4 hours or 5 hours a day it depends on my schedule but it's not that i stop learning before that and after that learning takes place whenever i am free when i'm relaxed all the qualities that i mentioned now so you cannot say i'm just going to finish everything within 4 months and after that i should be able to clear the interview of course you can have a goal you can have a target if you have to attend an interview or pass an examination see even when you learn cooking or when you learn swimming which is a passion for many you don't stop learning you learn new recipes you add to that skill sometimes people try different cuisines different kind of dishes it could be the desserts it could be anything that is continental or chinese what i'm trying to tell you is every day you keep adding so that's what is very important when it comes to developing a skill but it is always required of you as a learner and even if trainers are listening to me that you need to upgrade your skill because if you're just going to do something for your work if you're just going to do something to get a promotion if you're just going to do something for a particular period of time it's not going to be with you this is something that i'm speaking from my experience when something becomes a passion when people do with passion there's a lot of difference so i hope this clarifies everything um don't overburden and uh, overpower yourself with so many things work on it step by step thank you so much happy learning